computer. We are recording now. Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of the Ippy Insider. We are being joined by Andrew Radigan, um, who is a great individual and a good friend of ours at Ippy. Um, Andrew is passionate about people and property, and you can see it's evident in his work. Um, he, see, I see a, he sees a bright future for the industry and hopes to marry the old world trust with new technology um, to empower the clients and get results in turn. Um, so Andrew, you're very welcome. Thanks a million for jumping on. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. So Andrew, let's jump into some topical conversations we've been having. Tell us a little bit about the background, your background in the industry, um, and you know, we can then jump into your journey. Yeah, well, I mean, I think I, I originally studied psychology, and at the time, I didn't know that would be a precursor to everything else I did as I went through my working life. And I naturally was naturally drawn to sales in different capacities, and that led me on to property at a later stage in life. But it gave me the great foundation in terms of realizing what element of the experience I was most interested in. Um, and that's where what led me to where I'm at at the moment. Super. So you've obviously been through, I mean, you've been through a lot looking at your, you know, your history and the resume of, 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 of the, you know, industry. You've been, you've been in your traditional style. You've seen the industry evolve. What are some of the biggest challenges you've, you've had to face over, over the last, let's say, three or four years? The biggest standout would be the fact that there are common misconceptions about estate agents. And I think sometimes it's, a, it's like swimming against the tide when you're dealing with people who may have had a bad experience or they have notions of what to expect and they're not always the best. So I find my job is to acknowledge those, address them up front because it's important and then to prove them wrong. Super, super. So let's kind of go back and I know we talk a lot about, you know, you know why you got into um, property. And, and, and let's go into a little bit deeper on, I, I, you've obviously, the psychology background, you like the sales, you were dealing in a specific area of the market. Um, why did you, why did it resonate so well with you? Interaction, I think my background, my family background is in property. So I was always surrounded by builders or different types of um, properties in one shape or another. And naturally I realized that the customer experience adapts according to the product and that being an interest of mine and as I moved into the sales element of it I realized that at the core of it was where I excel or enjoy most which is the client interaction and the experiences you can build with people. Super, super. So I know there's been there's been a slight transition for yourself with with you know off the bat of COVID and and, and along then with your own your own growth within, within, you know, building your own company and, and congratulations. It's, it's commendable to see agents going out and, and, and building a business for them, for, for themselves, because a huge, huge experience um, in the industry. What advice would you give to someone um, who wants to go from your traditional style, you know, working in a, in a bricks and mortar style agency to going out on their own and, and really, you know, for, for the younger generation, let's say, cutting their teeth in, a, in an industry whereby it's, it's easy, all you need now is a laptop, access to portals, a license. Um, what, 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 what tips would you give to someone doing that? I think it starts with the foundation of how you get into the business. Um, I be round up and pardoning the property pun of foundations. I think by learning from someone who is a trusted mentor, to be like them or the equivalent of, of the way they built a business. You have to learn the right way, adapt it to what suits your own personality, and then take a view to what you want to do with the future. And if you marry that with the likes of the availability of modern technology that we have now, the automation and the fact that post COVID we have all embraced um, the digital customer experience, not just the physical, um, I think that will give us more time to actually work with clients on a more um, hand, in, uh, hand in hand basis in that we're not simply spending our time um, in the office trying to push papers. We're actually part of the process from start to finish. Yeah, it's a, gr it's a, great, it's a great point in terms, 
And, and do you see a, a transition within the industry from your, your traditional towards your more digital, more agents going out on their own? I mean, there's, there's the reality of this is a lot of people have been, you know, losing their jobs, furloughed to, to whatever capacity. But, you know, I think there's massive gaps in the market now for guys to go out and do things a little differently with the tech that, that we have. And, and, and we are, we're still somewhat behind, but, but there is companies um, that, are, that are making bigger plays now with, with investing into technology from uh, the likes of your, your bigger guys, your Savills, your CBREs, putting huge you know, plugs into, into their agents. But if, if, you, if you take, let's say, take back six months ago, um, where you were and what got you to the position of, of, of announcing, let's say, you going out on your own, what were those? What were those? You know, key indicators for you, right? This is what I want to do. I want to go and do this because I've I've got the experience, I've got the talent, um, that you could maybe resonate with some guys that are listening to this today to say, well, I can actually do this myself. You know, I think it's a great question. I think one of the most amazing things I've learned from property is that whatever company or person or agency you work with you are your own brand. And I think once you invest in what it is you believe in, in terms of your core, how you do things, my personality is totally different to someone else's. And the way I do things is different. But at my core, I lead with my compassion, my empathy, my trust, and I balance that with my market knowledge. And I think by assessing the market, I feel that post COVID, however terrible it, it is in the, the current circumstances, there's always an opportunity to add your own mark to what it is you do. And with property, no, no agency. And I felt by embracing the modern elements of technology that will help take the cumbersome parts of my day, it means I can give you, the client, more time. And I think that's a big part of the process that people forget that it, although it's a transaction, actions don't have to be transactional. And I would be extremely focused on the client, the experience, and also communicating throughout to that brand and from a larger brand or a different agency. It, it really is crucial that the whole the building of the relationship and how they communicate with their database, which I know we've discussed discussed prior. It's it's the organization of those leads and those those leads coming from let's say the portals. Are now coming from other sources of of or of streams like your LinkedIn, your Instagrams. You have a big enough social presence on these guys, and I'm I can see it. You can see you can see agents pulling pulling multiple different listings through through social media now, and um, in, in in multiple different sectors. How how are you doing things differently? And dig in. We don't have to go too deep on this, but just like an overlay, because I know you're you're giving out constant, you know content if i ask you any question it's it's like your your open book policy which is great because the more people in in the industry that kind of collaborate together the greater it's going to be you know you are a, fr a fraction of the people that you hang around with and we were talking about this with regina last week it was like i think a collaboration sense needs to be needs to come into play with making sort of a mindset shift mindset shift because it is a shift in in mindset of of how we've done business before and how we need to change for the consumer's perspective in a whole and, and, and for, for the agents. Agents need, if, if agents are trying to, to get more credibility, more trust, because that's what the consumer wants at the end of the day. Yes, having the right data. Yes, having a streamlined process will help. But collaboration between agents will lead to more results and will lead to better ideas. So I know you think you're doing things the way I certainly would as an agent. Can we go into a little bit of detail on that? summarized it very well but if I was to look at the the novel which is obviously a different asset class but the concept is quite similar and one thing I miss about the car business is that camaraderie and building a network of people that you prove your worth over time it doesn't happen overnight but you build trust with people and they champion your cause relative to what it is you want to do because I believe competition is great, but your own competition, the biggest competition is you and yourself and what way you want to carry yourself. And I would love to see property give people the opportunity to build a network where just because 
I didn't get the property you're selling in X part of the world doesn't mean I can't help you when the time is right and you can reciprocate. And I think by building that kind of network, we can really enhance the experience for the clients and also enhance our reputation as agents and show people that we are united in certain ways. Obviously, we all do things differently. That's why our personalities and our chosen businesses come into the, into the choice. But that would be a big element of what I would love to see happen, that the same way I carry myself in my personal life, if you ask me, Kenneth, for something, or you ask my advice or my help, if I can oblige, I'd be the first person to help, and I don't expect something in return. And I think that's a great way to build relationships and trust and that then married with, um, I suppose, the technical advancements, I think that would you know, really come to play in terms of making, um, making it better all around for the end user. You there? You still there? Yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah, cool, I just lost you for a minute. Um, so, so kind of going on to some, some if we're looking at trends or you're looking at what are you excited about for, for your own journey um, over the next, you know, 2021 is going to be a big year. Um, and I've got, you know, I, I can, I can see already it, it, it's, you've been building, put it that way, you've been building over the last six to eight months. And it's, it's great to see, you know, people putting, you know, going two steps back to go a couple more forward. Um, what are you most excited about coming into coming into 2021? What trends are you really looking at? I think if people are going to embrace alternative models of service more so than they would have done before COVID. Um, I think you always have to look at the opportunities and everything. And that's not making it's not necessarily making the most of it by mm. circumstance change that's coming. So for me, I believe the likes of Data-driven tools such as your own um, IPI is one big element that I see as being the beginning of something that's going to really drive um, the business forward. And I think in terms of the value and information I can give people, it will give it far more credence when it comes from a specific source that you can measure and you can also measure at different points in history. Um, property tended to be very word of mouth or hearsay that you've heard such and such a property went for X, Y, Z. And I think data is going to be a key factor in empowering clients as well to understand where and why certain prices are achieved, what was unique, and also how to manage that going forward. Equally, I'm excited about the various tools that I start to see become available and also that start to work towards the time-driven time driven aspect of what it is we do. Because what we do is very physical, I'm mindful to make the most of the things that can be automated that free up my quality time to be with you as a client. That's worth the investment for me. And balance that with the embracing of how newer opportunity, so the change in, in virtual viewings, virtual stagings, that has gone from a fancy add-on to a must-have. If you don't have virtual viewings, um, you just, you've, you're not at the races. And that for me is a very exciting time to be in. So in terms of my, my future in 2021, yes, it's a lot of physical interaction, but I also look forward to learning more about making the most of my time and then using that difference in time to add value for people and my clients. You spoke about psychology at the start of this. I'd love to hear your kind of thoughts behind that shift. You've gone from over here, which by doing it a certain way, to now coming over this side going, hang on a sec, this can be done differently. How did you bridge the gap between those two? I listen. Um, I think the biggest thing I've seen when it comes to sales in general is you are talked at a lot of the time. Someone is given a script, you are either sold to or you feel things. By listening to clients and understanding where they are coming from, an investor with no um, relationship to a property, he's looking at his cold heart of figures needs to be dealt with differently than the family who are selling because of a breakup or a bereavement 
or those who've had a great news story. And I think by applying that element to the business, I'm looking at taking a client-centric approach to what it is I do, rather than simply get a board up, make promises, sell, hopefully it goes well, but you know what, let's see what happens. I believe that one client's need or request or demand is not the same as another. And I think it's easy to get lost in figures, fees, ads, portals, but we're all forgetting that the very person or the very people at the core of this are the ones that actually give you the business in the first place. And that's a big part of, I was very fortunate to learn the trade from Janet Carroll and she took a very hands-on approach to dealing with people. And for me, I'm looking to continue in that vein, but most importantly, I'm not swimming against the tide in my, my mind and the way I do things. I say things genuinely, openly and transparently because I want to drive value. Like a mechanic telling you there's something wrong with your car, he's telling you for the right reasons and not just because he doesn't like your car. I'm trying to drive value. And I think by taking that approach, I hope it can show people how each agency is different, but also how we can balance, again, like my, my top level phrase, which was old world trust with new world technology. And no doubt you will do that because, you know, you look, at, you look at most of the guys out there who are doing you know, value, adding so much value to the client that it doesn't even feel like a transaction. Tom Panos talks about it the whole time. People like shopping with friends. So why make this transaction? If it's the biggest transaction and biggest investment that someone's going to go through, you want to do it in a way that you don't like being sold. I was down, simple, in a veg shop this morning buying, buying my fruit. The guy has built a relationship with me that when I go in there, I don't even even think of the transaction. Because he has just said, and I think that needs to, it's like, I'm going out Saturday with buddies of mine doing Christmas shopping. You enjoy that. That's what, what, if, why can't we set in the industry, why can't we set those same parameters with clients? Whereby you're, take it, look like, like you would take the client out for a meal, take the client out for a drink, go for a walking meeting. You know, it doesn't have to be this, take the leads through you know, take the leads through DAF, take the leads through my home, you know, do the viewing, make them queue up, don't get back to them, don't communicate with them, because that's what's going on. Speaking to them all, you know, speaking to people on both sides of this fence, and it's, it's frustrating to see, because you see guys like yourselves, you see, you know, all these really strong, you know, taught leaders in the industry making such strides and trying to digitalize and trying to give so much value and then it takes one, it takes one bad one to, to try and disrupt what everyone else is. So I'd love to go a little bit deeper on that again. And just looking at anything else, we, we, could, we could look at Andrew. Um, I know we went slightly off piss there, usually, usually do. Uh, but anything else you want to share with, with, with guys who are transitioning or, or looking to maybe set up on their own? I think you need to figure out what works well and best with you and that's how you set yourself apart because there are enough houses and properties out there where we will all make a living we will all thrive in our own way uh, i think you need to really embrace who it is you are and do so with a real honest eye and an air of being humble because it's not about being the guy who looks great on instagram and looks like he's closing a hundred million euro worth of deals Ireland is not New York. And I think by embracing what it is that makes us unique, and that comes from our personalities, I think they would have to really assess what it is that makes them tick. Because when you're in a company, when you're setting up your own company, I'm not in a board meeting with a senior sales director that I have to justify my time. I justify what I do to myself. And I, in turn, want to use that to justify to clients why it is I'm guiding them along this path. And for someone going out on their own, they really need to ask themselves those questions because that's how you'll differentiate yourself. You don't want to be a and other. I respect everybody in different fields, and I'm very mindful that what works for someone might not work for someone else. But I think we live in an age that there's tremendous change, tremendous opportunity, and I think it's a very exciting time to embrace the best elements of ourselves, take our experiences, and then bring, lift the industry a little bit in terms of working as a collective, 
to build up that trust that the general public will have. Um, and I think that's the best way to, to move forward and succeed in whatever version of success is for that person, whether it be, be, whether it be revenue, whether it be putting people with the right people, um, much, like, you know, much like connectors in the entertainment business. I think there is a place for everybody and it's about learning where you fit and adding your own mark to that. Great, well said, yeah. In terms of some tools that, you're, that you may be looking at, you know, or, or, or different, different approach to expose, could you, could you enlighten us in the, I know you're gonna go heavy on, on content, which is great, you know, and great, would be great for the industry. Uh, I don't want you to plug Ippy again, that's one thing. Um, <laughs> Uh, any other tools or, 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 or sort of how are you going to expose properties let's just say I think a good quality CRM um, is, a, is obviously a great background because it gives you a great base that you can work on and it allows you to spend time doing what works well I think it's also assess each property on its given merits so the heavy influence of social media um, in the last number of months and, and years has shown that if you drive enough value for people and you provide content that people want to engage with and they feel like they're getting something from you without you simply trying to sell to them. I think there's a great avenue for agents to create that individual portal through their brand, which doesn't mean you have to set up anything except yourself to be consistent, that you could take pieces of the American model and build a portal based on your brand in terms of what you're selling. I also believe we underestimate the value of social media and how cheap it is relevant to your time. And the more time you put into it, the more you're going to get from it long term. But the automated end of property of the, of the background of what we do is something that I'm interested in because that gives me more time to leverage with clients. And I think we live in a very fast paced world and it's important to remember that those who pay our bills at the end of the day are the very ones that want us to call, want us to communicate. And it's something where I want to really put a focus on that standpoint and not lose sight of what it is I want to achieve. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant guys, you heard it from himself. I mean, he's shifted, I've spoke to him, we've spoke a fair bit over the last couple of months. It's amazing to see you transition, not only your mindset, but your, your, your way of thinking. Um, you've educated yourself, you've clearly read books, you've looked at other markets, You've done your market research and, 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 and you know, it's hats off. It's hats off. And I wish you, I wish you, you know, all the best with, with, with your launch. And um, we're, we're here to help everyone at Four Property and Ippy. We're here to help you um, in any capacity we can. Guys, we'll leave Andrew's details um, below. Check out his journey. It's going to be an interesting one. Um, he's going to do things differently. And I can tell he's going to add a huge amount of value to his clients, which in turn, you know, the studies show guys who give, put more in tech and more into the relationship are more profitable in, in the end. Um, so Andrew, thank you very much for, for jumping on today. Um, we will leave everything in the comments. Andrew's details will be there and his website's going to launch in the next couple of months, Andrew. Yes, yeah, so I'm hoping to launch uh, middle, middle to end of January. Super. So Andrew, thank you very That's much for your big... time.